Hi, I'm Brian Larson, Director of Partner Business Development at Broadcom. I'm here with our senior systems engineer, John Fonseca, who has helped design FICON architectures for over 20 years. Welcome to the FICON Expert Series. Today, we're going to talk about the Brocade Gen 7 Director and what you need to consider when doing port addressing and planning for board layout to maximize performance in a FICON architecture. John, before we start, maybe we should just do a review of the board layout of a Gen 7 director and any differences from previous generations. Absolutely, Brian. Yeah, so we're doing this a lot with our customers. We're actually talking to them about the newer family of directors, the Gen 7s. And what we have in front of you here are the two Gen 7 directors, the X7-8 director and the X7-4 director. The X7-8 is 14U, the X7-4 is 9U, and they are both part of the same architecture, same Gen 7 family. On the next slide, we go into a little more detail. We've got eight line cards on the X7-8, uh, the four blue indicated line cards on the left and the four blue indicated line cards on the right. That's for your CPU and your DASI connectivity. Uh, in the center, you have these red core blades, the CR blades. Those blades are used to help interconnect the line cards to each other inside the chassis. They're kind of the heart of the system. Uh, also, we have on the far left of the chassis, two CPs. These are your management boards and they're fully redundant. This is what manages the system, allows you to do firmware upgrades and maintain the system. You'll notice on the next slide, the four slot director, it's a very similar architecture. You have two line cards above, you have two line cards below, again, shaded in blue, and you have the two core blades in the center of the chassis that are used again for line card interconnectivity. Uh, you also have two CP blades, that's for management connectivity at the very top. And this director has, uh, again, the, a choice of front airflow, rear airflow, uh, in a 9U form factor. So it's a really uh, great uh, part of the family, the X7-8 and also the X7-4. John, that's great information. Thank you. Um, in conversations that you and I have had over the years, uh, in, in the designs that you've done for FICON clients, you've mentioned some guiding principles that you use for best practices and best, best practice deployment. Uh, could you review with our viewers and show them how they might impact a fabric design, please? Absolutely. Uh, so, so a lot of our customers are going through 8510 migrations into Gen 7, and many of them are going from eight director FICON environments to four director FICON environments. Uh, so what we want to do is guide them through how best to lay out their new environment. Uh, so the first step, and there are five steps in this, uh, this optimization plan. The first step is obviously to multi-connect all of your environments to different physical director chassis. The second step is, if needed, uh, connect them across multiple logical switches. The third step is now that you have done the logical switch step, connect them to different physical line cards. Once that is complete, then you can take advantage of our new uh, features that Brocade has, which has to do with getting the lowest latency possible through our system. So here we have ultra low latency. We'll talk about local switching. Step five is when you're not able to uh, put them all on the same line card and you need to cross ba uh, ISL boundaries, then you need to observe the 2345 rule. So that's something that we've come up with to remind customers of Brocade's unique virtual channel technology that leverages different VCs within the system. Uh, John, before you move on, uh, you just mentioned the 8510 platform and also the X7 or the Gen 7 platform. Uh, just so that we're all clear, the 8510 was two previous generations, which is a Gen 5 platform. Is that correct? That's correct. So the Gen 5 8510 was a 16 gig platform. Uh, the Gen 7s are now a 64 gig platform. So one of the things that we'll be calling out uh, as part of that, you know, our discussion today on local switching is that the 8510 did have a 32 port line card whereas the X7s and the X6s, the X7s have 48 port line cards. So we'll be calling out some of the differences between the local switching boundaries and how best to avoid some of the potholes there. So step one, when we start to optimize this environment is obviously to spread out your connectivity between physical chassis. So that's, you know, no brainer, everyone does it. Make sure you have redundant directors in your environment. Uh, the second step is where you take uh, your two directors or your four directors and you add logical switches. So again, some customers might be going from four directors down to two, 
Well, with logical switches, we can maintain that four director look and feel by carving up each physical director into two logical switches. So here we have Apple Zero and Apple One. Uh, those are two separate uh, logical switches. We also have Apple Apple and Apple Baker. Those are the second logical switches in each of those chassis. So that's again to kind of maintain a look and feel that they're used to having four different switches. Uh, the next step that we take them through is now that you have your logical switches laid out, you want to now spread your connectivity across line cards. And so the line card connectivity here allows you to spread out your connections across the line cards, make sure you don't have all your eggs in any one basket, and then take it from there. The next step is where we take the local switching aspect into consideration, and you now lay out your connectivity across different ASICs on the line card. So that allows you to now take advantage of local switching, take advantage of the ultra low latency that you get as a result, and then connect your environment. The last optimization here, the two, three, four, five rule. This is where we start to pay attention to the virtual channels that are being used in the chassis. The two, three, four, five rule is really when we kind of have to move across line cards, or if you have ISLs within the environment, you know, you want to pay attention to the 2345 rule. When we go through the traffic optimizer series, we'll go into a lot more detail when it comes to the virtual channel technology. You, you mentioned a function called local switching that can maximize the performance and provide the lowest latency within the system. I think we need to go a little bit deeper. Could you give the viewers a better understanding, a deeper understanding of how that works? Absolutely. So this, this question comes up a lot and we often go on site and whiteboard these kind of education series with customers. And what I like to do with them is just kind of imagine the director as a fabric. So we've got two core ASICs up top. We have four edge ASICs on the bottom. And this is really how the director is, is constructed. Multiple ASICs interconnected. Uh, on the edge ASIC, when you have to cross the boundary and send out to another line card or another ASIC, you're actually sending that traffic to the core blade. You're leaving the ASIC, you're hitting the core ASIC, and then you're coming back down to another edge ASIC on the way out. And in fact, because it's a director class product, you're actually going out and hitting both core blades. Remember, they're redundant. So your IO is actually load balanced evenly across both core blades, and then it goes out of the exit port. So that latency path is about 2.1 microseconds when it comes to the 8510 in Gen 5. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. Local switching is when you actually go in and out of the same ASIC. You're not taking multi hops to get out of the director. You're just really entering the ASIC and leaving the ASIC. And it's the ultra low latency path. With Gen 7, that is 460 nanoseconds. So it's even improved further than what we're doing with Gen 5. Now, a lot of times we also get asked, well, how does this benefit my application? Well, a lot of applications are getting boosted today. They're either going faster with 32 gig connectivity or they're using newer, faster technology like SSD or NVMe. So you can notice that the frames within those IOs, they're, they're, there's a lot of frames. And if you're able to kind of not take three hops or every individual frame, then you ultimately gain the benefit of local switching across all different applications and all different traffic types. Okay, so you you mentioned this uh, the FICON logical fabrics and how you can lay out and you can uh, segment these different things into virtual logical switches uh, within those designs. However, how does the designer know where to plug into what blade and what port to gain that maximum performance and that lowest latency that you had mentioned? Right. So. The, the idea here is you want to make sure that those ports land on the same ASIC boundary. So what I'm showing you here is the 8510 director 32 port card layout. And you'll notice that it's very simple in design, meaning the bottom 16 ports and the upper 16 ports on the line card are easily known to be lower ASIC and upper ASIC. Very easy. So when the customer would connect their, their DASD connections and their CPU connections, it was really easy for them to figure out, hey, I'm on the same ASIC, I'm on either the lower half of the board or the upper half of the board. When we look at 4EZ, 4FOX, and 5FOX, those upper indicated purple ports, we're going to you know, bring this up later when we go through the 48 port card because on the 32 port card, they're on the same boundary, but on the 48 port card, they may not be. 
So you may have to pay a little attention to where your new connections are going to be going. Um, on the right half of the director, we're going to just highlight what not to do. So as you can see here, you're crossing that imaginary red line between the ASICs, and you're now taking that three ASIC hop instead of the local switching hop. And again, even though these two ports are adjacent to each other, you are crossing that imaginary line and you're losing the advantage of local switching. So on the next slide, this is the 48 port card that the Gen 7s use. And you'll notice that we have two ASICs, again, a lower ASIC and an upper ASIC. However, there's a zigzag in the middle and that zigzag kind of divides where the ASIC is. And so one way to easily remember that ASIC boundary is the letter S. It looks like an S, it's a zigzag that looks like an S. So it's very easy to remember. Now, if you take that S and carry it through each of the individual line cards, you can see that we have a local switching boundary well-defined for our customers. Again, keep them on the lower ASIC or the upper ASIC, that's fine. When we get to that four easy, four Fox, five Fox purple ports from the last slide, you'll notice now they're on two different ASICs. So you've crossed that line. What you may need to do for this environment is readdress these ports, and now they're gonna be on the yellow uh, seven range so that you can now still take advantage of local switching, but you may have to do some uh, address changes there. And on the right side of the blade, again, we're just gonna call out, if you're crossing uh, the boundaries, you're gonna pay a penalty in terms of taking additional hops through the chassis. All right, so that's the local switching ASIC boundary or step four. As we go into step five, which is that two, three, four, five rule, you can think of the virtual channel in our director like a four lane highway. And the lanes are numbered two, three, four, and five. What you don't wanna have is all of your cars on lane two. And that's exactly what we're depicting here on the slide. When you're all going across a line card like this, you're putting all of these connections on lane two. And there is a chance for oversubscription or there is a chance for congestion when you do it this way. Instead, what you should do is stagger the connections so that you can take advantage of all lanes in the director, all four lanes here, two, three, four, and five, and not run into a, a possibility of, of hitting congestion in your director. Fantastic, John. Those are some of the best practices that you've been using for years. So um, we hope that that was uh, beneficial to the viewers. And we, that's just about all the time we have for this video. There are going to be other videos, and John mentioned one that has traffic optimization. Very interesting video that uh, applies to this as well. So to get further information, refer to our Broadcom mainframe sand page on our website. And on behalf of John and I, thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.